Jingle bells ringing in my ear Jingle bell a sound that's oh so dear Frosty the snowman is all around town Watch out the rain, these are falling down We stay up waiting for Santa tonight He climbs down the chimney at the speed of light While we're dancing around Everyone, welcome back to my channel, The Baking Diva and a big shout out to all my new subscribers. Well, Christmas is only a couple of weeks away and I'm trying to get in some nice Christmas recipes for you. What am I gonna make for you today? Well, I am Italian and I grew up with the Italian crispy waffle type cookie called a pizzelle. That's right. And about three or four years ago on my channel, I put a video on there, how to make your basic pizzelles. And I don't know, I think at the time it got about 6,000 views and a lot of people were gonna make it. It's a very, very popular cookie around the holidays for Easter and Christmas. So today, I thought I'd bring you something a little bit different since Christmas is right around the corner. I'm gonna make you gingerbread pizzelles. Now, have you ever heard of those? They're so good. And stay tuned and continue watching this video because I'm gonna show you some cool things you can do with those pizzelles. And according to my note, pizzelles come from the Italian word, let me read this, for round, actually, peas, P-I-Z-Z-E, -E, is the Italian word for round and flat. And L, the E-L-L-E, -L -L -E, means small. So basically, these are small, flat cookies. And I know many years ago, they used to be called, I think, snowflake cookies. And uh, people used to make them with like um, one of those irons, like on a handle and all. I mean, they date way, way back. They're one of the oldest cookies. They came from Italy and uh, you didn't have a wedding or anything without these cookies. All, there's all different flavor pizzelles you can make. The most popular are the ones with either the vanilla extract or the anise. That's sort of like that licorice flavor. Those are really good. They have chocolate you can make, pizzelles. I've seen lemon. Um, I guess you can use your imagination, but uh, long ago in Italy, you didn't have a wedding or anything like that without pizzelles at it. And anybody out there that is Italian, I'm sure you've heard of them. So today, I'm gonna make you gingerbread pizzelles. So, oh look, before I do, isn't this cute? This is the uh, gingerbread house that my grandson Lucas made. I think he did a great job. He's got these Christmas gumdrops on the roof and icicles on it. It's got little candy canes around the door, lights in the window. He did a nice job. So I wanted to congratulate him on doing that. I think he told me they're gonna be making them in school now too. So I'm gonna move this over. All right. Well, in order to make pizzelles, you need a pizzelle machine. Like I said, years ago, they would make them on these irons and all, but now in modern times, they sell pizzelle machines. I have mine here, and when we get to that point, I'm gonna show it to you. But first, we're gonna mix our ingredients, and I will put the recipe in the description box below for you, um, as I always do. So let me move my bowls over here. All right. So you're gonna need your first bowl. And in that bowl, you're gonna put your dry ingredients. Now this may sound like a lot of ingredients, but it's really not. Most of it is spices. So I'm gonna put in here one and three quarter cups of flour. We're gonna put two teaspoons of baking powder. Put that in. They're very easy to make one teaspoon of cinnamon. Okay, now we have one teaspoon of ginger. 
These are all of our spices that are going in first. A half a teaspoon of nutmeg. A quarter of a teaspoon of ground cloves. And we're going to put in a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. So we have our dry ingredients in this bowl. So I'm gonna take a spoon and I'm gonna mix the flour, the baking powder, and the spices all together. Get them all combined. Is anybody making anything to do with gingerbread this Christmas? Are you making gingerbread cookies? I, I am way far behind on my cookies. I'm gonna get started on them this weekend. Usually by this time, I have so many made, but it's been a lot going on around here and I got a little bit behind. <laughs> okay, so this, is, so this is all mixed pretty well. So let me put this aside. Now I'm gonna take another bowl. Okay, so in my second bowl, I'm going to mix my eggs and this recipe calls for three eggs. Brown sugar, putting in there a half a cup of brown sugar. We're gonna put some dark molasses in there. We're going to put two tablespoons of molasses in there. You know what I did? I actually sprayed my little bowl with just a hint of Pam. So this way the molasses doesn't stick and it comes out nice and easy. All righty. And I'm gonna put in there vanilla. I'm gonna put in there, let me see, one teaspoon of vanilla extract. All right. I'm gonna take a whisk, my handy dandy whisk, and I'm gonna mix all of this together. The brown sugar, the eggs, molasses, and the vanilla. Mm-hmm. Now at the end of this video, I'm going to show you some cool things you can do with pizzelles. All right, you don't need an oven for them, you just need a pizzelle maker. Get this mixed up really well. Oh wow, that smell of that molasses. Oh wow, cameraman. Cameraman's behind the camera. Can you smell that molasses across the room? No? Mm. Yes or no? No. Oh, I can smell it here, wow. All right, that looks like it's mixed pretty good. Now, to this mixture, I'm going to add a half a cup of melted butter. So let's get that in there. And continue mixing that. Mmm, yummy. See, other than those spices I put in there and a few other ingredients, it's really pretty easy. And go back, go back. I can't remember if it's three or four years and look up my video for my pizzelles. I look a little different in the video. A little bit younger, a little bit different, a little bit hair, different hair too, different glasses, but I think you'll recognize me. So this is all combined here. All of that mixed well. Okay. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add my flour mixture to this wet mixture and I'm going to combine it. I'm gonna add it a little bit at a time. Some of that in there. Just mix that. You can see what I'm doing here. We're gonna stir it till it's combined and we have a nice smooth batter. That whisk in there too. I just wanna get some of this flour mixture incorporated in there. It's that nice dark brown color of gingerbread. Okay, let me move my bowl out of the way. All righty. So I'm going to finish mixing this off camera. I'm going to get my pizzelle maker out here. And when I come back, we'll be all set to make these. So don't go away. Okay, I incorporated all the ingredients here. All right, so 
Over here now is my Pizel maker. I just plugged it in. Um, I happen to have a chef's choice, but I've had this for quite a while. It gets very hot. I'm going to open up the handle for you. And let me see if the cameraman can zoom in on this. This is what a Pizel maker looks like. Now, mine makes two. There's some that make six. And if you can see, they all have designs on them. This one looks like a flower. Um, this has a star in the middle. So all your Pizels will have designs on them. So let me put this down. All right. Now, the first thing you need to do is you need to spray your Pizel maker with a little nonstick spray. So let me do that on the top and on the bottom. Okay. What we're gonna do, and I'll show you, we're going to put about a tablespoon of our batter in the middle of the Pizel. I like to put it a little above the middle because remember, when you pull this down, it's going to squish the batter and spread out. Now, it's not a major catastrophe. Oh, usually the first few don't come out that good. It's trial and error. You have to keep trying them until you get them the right shape that you want and with the right amount of dough. And sometimes if they come out a little bit bigger, no biggie. You just take a butter knife or your fingers, we'll probably have to do that, and break off the ends. Eat them. <laughs> so, now I will tell you now, that once your pizelles are cool, you must keep them in an airtight container. If you leave them out in the air, they will tend to get soft and you don't want that. These pizelles are supposed to be crispy and you want them to stay crispy like that. All right, I think this is hot enough, so we're gonna try our first ones. Just like the first piece of pie is hard to get out, sometimes the first batch of pizelles don't come out perfect, but let's give them a try. So let me open the handle, and in the center, I'm gonna take my spoon. You don't wanna to put too much. I'll take this spoon, and I'm going to put the dough right in the center here. I don't know if you can see that or not. Put a little bit more. Work it around. I'll put a little bit more on the other side. Whoopsie. And we'll know right away if this is too much batter or not when we close them. It might be too much or it might be not enough. So let me close these. They only take 30 or 40 seconds. So we're going to close them. You hear them sizzling. Once the pizel maker goes down, the batter will spread out and We'll give it a few seconds and then we'll take a look and see if we think they're done or not. Once you get going on these pizelles, they go fast. And I gotta tell you, that gingerbread smell is awesome. Oh, it smells so good. So let's just give these a few seconds. You don't wanna raise the handle too soon. And I'll tell you now while we're baking them, so many things you can do with these. You can take two pizelles, two round pizelles, and you can put ice cream in the middle of them. Put the top on it, put them in the freezer. You'll have an ice cream sandwich. Uh, for those that know what a cannoli is, you know, the crispy shell with that cannoli filling in it, um, you can make a little cannoli shell. Um, get like a, something tubular, and then while they're still warm, they have to be soft, you can mold them around there and they will stay. If you look at my other video I put on, you'll see me do it on there. Also, you can make them in a cone shape. Uh, let me just see how these are doing. Oh, these are doing good, very hot. But I can see we need to put more dough in them. So, whoopsie, they are very hot. Let me take these out, let me show you because you see, how nice this was coming, but we needed to put more dough in it. Okay, the first batch or two that I made, they're not, they weren't getting to come out like my normal pizelles. Like they were a little thicker and I wasn't happy. So if your batter, now this is my second batch. If your batter is a little too thick, I just added a little water. Now look, 
This is how your PZLs are supposed to come out. See that? So I think the molasses uh, thickened the batter up a little bit. You're supposed to have these nice, beautiful PZLs. I'm gonna put a little bit more spray on there because it's starting to get hot. And I'm gonna make a couple more. So that would be my suggestion. Um, if the batter's too thick, thin it with just a little bit of water and uh, you'll get these perfect pizzelles. Because pizzelles are supposed to be sort of like a thin, crispy kind of a um, cookie. Those are gonna be fine. So this is it. This is your pizzelle. So let me finish these and then I'm gonna show you, as soon as they're cool, how I finish a couple of these off. And to my friend Allie up in Boston, try this, you'll like it. She always makes my Pizel recipe around the holidays. Okay, so if any of you have made Pizels, let me know. And let me know um, what flavors you've made. I really like the ones with the anise. They just have that subtle licorice flavor. They're very Italian. The, the vanilla ones are pretty basic. Um, there's chocolate ones. And look at this, such a beautiful design on there. There's a flower on one side and there's a little design on the other side. Perfect. Okay, so as soon as I thinned out my batter a little bit, these pizzelles started coming out like perfect pizzelles, nice and thin and crispy um, with their perfect design on them. So you can leave them as it is. What I like to do, and I always sprinkle some confectioner's sugar on mine. They're very good that way. Gives them a little more sweetness to them. Okay. Now, what else you can do is, I melted some semi-sweet chocolate here. You can take your pizel and you can dip just a little bit, maybe half of it or less, in the chocolate. And then you can put it right down on your wax paper till the chocolate sets. If you want to be festive, you can put a few sprinkles on it since you're making these for Christmas. So let me just dip a little bit of this into the chocolate. We're not going to put a lot in there. I'll show it to you when I have it done. I'll do a still for you. Let the chocolate drip off. You see what I'm doing here? Can you see it, cameraman? Okay. Look at that. And then I'm going to put it down. And I'm going to let it set. Normally, I'm, I wouldn't put sprinkles, but this is adorable since it's the holiday. Putting a few of these little Christmas sprinkles on it. And I'm going to do another one. You can put chopped nuts on the chocolate if you want. Um, you can dip it in white chocolate if you want. I was thinking about doing that, but I didn't have any white chocolate, so I used what I had. There we go. Just let that drip off a little bit, and look at these. I'll show you still. They look beautiful. I'm gonna put it down on my wax paper, put a few of these Christmas sprinkles on my Pizels. I love them. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope if you have a Pizel machine, you've already made these, and if not, maybe down the road you'll think about getting one, because they really are delicious. I'm gonna eat a piece of the one I have over here. Mmm, so good. So, mmm, really good. So anyway, thank you so much for stopping by and watching me make these gingerbread pizzelles. If you want to see me make more, go down and hit that red subscribe. You won't miss my future videos. And also, I should tell you, not long ago, I started a second YouTube channel. It's just a, sh a small one. Um, I really haven't had a lot of time to dedicate it to it yet, but I will after the holidays. But I'm so obsessed with my air fryer <laughs> that I started a new channel called Air Fryer Recipes 101. For those that want to get used to um, an air fryer, thinking about buying one, just starting out. So 
I'll put the link in my description box and um, feel free to go over there and subscribe to my second channel, the Air Fryer channel. So anyway, thanks for stopping by. Love you all. If I don't see you again, have a Merry Christmas. I just want you all to know I appreciate you. Thank you so much for stopping by to watch me make these gingerbread pizzelles. And uh, if I don't see you, all of you, love you all. Merry Christmas.